Hey everybody, Fishman here. Welcome to another video. It seems a fair number of the projects I've been taking on lately are going to require an awful lot of moss, uh, both terrestrial and aquatic. Uh, fortunately, I already have a fair amount of java moss in the fish room, though the vast majority of it is submerged. I will probably have to come up with something similar to this to help it adapt to more of an immersed environment. Uh, but I do also have the high humidity planters, uh, which have some moss that is already converted, so I'll definitely make use of that. But one of the things I don't have any of is terrestrial moss. And fortunately, this is almost spring here. Uh, the trees uh, don't have leaves on them or anything yet, but uh, the grass is starting to green up, and so is the moss. So I went out and I you know, harvested some. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put together a little incubator. This is going to uh, sit on top of one of my aquariums, and it's going to have a lid on it to maintain a nice high uh, humidity environment. But one of the things it's not going to do is, if you remember how I put together my high humidity planters, there isn't going to be much in the way of current through this. Now, it is going to sit over the output for a filter, so there is going to be current buffeting against the bottom of this, and that will encourage a little bit of uh, water exchange between this environment and the aquarium. It's going to be a little bit more than, say, what's happening with the planter pots. Now, most of that, any exchange there is either through leaching or, of course, through the action of the plants, which are going to draw water up uh, from the aquarium. This is going to have, like I said, a little bit more of an exchange to keep this a little bit more uh, moist. Uh, but one of the things I really want to be cautious about here is this is, um, well, <laughs> it's wild moss. I actually went out and I collected this, so there are going to be other things in this. Uh, there's going to be snails, there's going to be worms and sow bugs and other things as well. I am going to uh, go to a fairly lengthy process of rinsing the bottom of this, but I know that it's not going to get rid of all of it. So I'm going to set this on top of the tank, and there is going to be a screen there to keep most of what's in here in here. But as time goes on, I'll you know take this down. I will uh, you know screen it, go through it, uh, move it around a little bit, and you know try it. first off divide it up a little bit, and also poke around and see if there's you know anything moving around in there. And in time, it will quarantine, and I will go to the process, of course, of hopefully encouraging it to grow. Now, I don't think there's going to be much of an issue that way. Uh, terrestrial moss is not hard to grow as long as it has reasonable lighting. It uh, doesn't really need direct lighting, uh, but it does need a fair amount of moisture. So if the high humidity planters and the planter pots and everything else that I've built for along this line has anything to say is, it's going to be quite easy to maintain that kind of environment. And part of the process of doing this besides getting stuff ready for uh, the large paludarium build and the paludarium I have in the fish room and of course the pond uh, I need to have a proof of concept for this I need to get this stuff growing and then of course once it's I'm satisfied with how well it's working I can put it together I mean this doesn't take long I mean it took maybe uh, five minutes to put this bomb together and another five minutes to make the top and then it's pretty much ready to go. I didn't bother showing you the drilling of the holes and all that stuff. And actually, I'm going to also put the uh, top uh, together off camera. Uh, it is quite similar to a lot of the other builds, of course, and of course, uh, similar to what I'm doing right here now. So if it works well, which I hope it will, uh, I will put some more of these together because I'm going to need, like I said, a fair amount of moss. So the pond is going to take a lot. But even more than that, that massive paludarium build, the U-shaped one, uh, it is going to have an awful lot of space in there that needs to be filled. And I'm not going to put a ton of moss in there, but uh, I would just like to have some uh, sitting around just in case it is a, a look I like for it. So I want to have options. And then with <laughs> all the lockdowns and everything, I really can't get uh, all the materials I like to go and just purchase. Uh, and so if I need plants, I need to be able to grow them. So this needs to be you know, one of the things that I have to put together. And as with the high humidity planters, the bottom part, uh, those little brackets I'm putting on are just going to hook onto the sides of the tank. And this chamber is going to fit down inside the tank. Now the tank it's going on has an elbow on it for the water level. 
And what I'm going to be able to do is um, tilt that nozzle so that it's either more up or more down. And I'm going to be able to adjust the humidity, or sorry, how much water is actually uh, on the bottom of this, which will hopefully impact, of course, the humidity and uh, how much moisture the moss is actually going to be exposed to. And I'm not sure, to tell you the truth, how much it's going to require or be exposed to in either any of those builds I told you about. Uh, so I want to be able to fiddle around with this and you know, test it out and see uh, how much it can actually take. The other thing you'll notice about this build is the cap for this is actually quite shallow. It's about three inches top to bottom, and you see the brackets I'm putting on here now. Uh, they are short enough that about a quarter of an inch of that is going to sit down inside here. So there's not really a lot of volume in here. Now, it was a bit of a guess on how much it's going to require. I did want to keep it uh, relatively shallow because that way uh, the humidity will build up quite nicely. Again, there's no bubbling going, me, uh, going on in here, and uh, it's going to be mostly passive buildup. So I wanted to give it as good a chance as possible. So there you go. That's uh, pretty much done. There's a screen I have to cut for this and then get it all ready to go. Uh, one of the reasons why it is as tall as it is, uh, now moss will send up stalks, uh, little stalks that it will uh, use for reproduction. And uh, I'm not entirely sure how tall they're going to grow. Uh, they're not terribly tall uh, sitting on uh, like in the woods or whatever. Uh, but uh, I wanted to, like I said, give it as you know as enough space without compromising you know the amount of humidity. And as far as how much in the way of gravel and soil to put in this, again, uh, just drawing upon a little bit of the experience I had with the planter pots. But mostly this again is just uh, trying something out. I'm going to put a thin layer of uh, gravel here. And then I'm going to also put a thin layer of soil because I'm going to be, as I said earlier, uh, rinsing pretty much all the soil that came with it off just to make sure there isn't uh, too much in the way of uh, little critters running around in this. And uh, so I wanted to replace that nutrient. And as far as how much of this is actually going to be uh, immersed or so say submerged, the gravel will definitely be uh, below the water level. And then from there on, it's just going to be uh, wicking through the soil to get into the bottom of the moss. I don't think keeping it wet will be a problem at all. I think it's going to be hopefully not too wet. And then uh, what's going to happen is uh, hopefully it will green up quite nicely and will grow. The tank that's going on does actually get a little bit of direct sunlight uh, you know, for a very short period of time during the afternoon. Uh, but I don't think that's going to be an issue either. I mean, moss doesn't really need a lot of sunlight. I am going to be in the process of putting some more lighting on uh, some of the tanks in the fish room. I obviously have to put together the lighting system for the large paludarium build. And I'm at the same time going to put another light over this uh, whole section. Uh, it is not getting as much light as I would like it to. Uh, it's nowhere near as well lit as the other uh, systems I have because... There's actually no light right over the tanks, so I uh, definitely have been meaning to get around to that, and I have actually got in uh, a bunch of uh, lights and ballasts from, sorry, power supplies from Sam from uh, Ottawa LED, uh, so I am pretty much all set to do that. So as you're going to see as I turn this over, that is uh, a lot of soil that I just don't want to risk putting in uh, any of my aquariums, so... I took it and took it to sink and rinsed off as much as will come off without, you know, damaging the actual uh, mat of moss. And that's pretty much it. I just turn this over, plop it down, unceremonious, and I'm going to wiggle this down a little bit as, uh, uh, well, actually I think it ends up being off camera. There's a few little things I'm going to pick out as well. But that's it. I'm just going to let this do its thing and we're going to see what happens. And... Hopefully it will start to grow and spread and stuff, but you, you never know with these things. I What I expect and sometimes what actually happens is uh, different. So you can see how it is just hanging on at the uh, water's level. And you'll see as it pans out near the very end of the video, it uh, has an adjustable knob. And that's uh, what I adjusted the height of the water with. So there you go. I'll do the updates for this. Uh, well, that's pretty much it for today. 
Thank you very much for watching. Let me know what you think of this and uh, leave lots of comments. I always love those. And thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video and bye for now.